Professor David Cole Hamilton is a past president of UCHEMS and joins me now. Thank you very much for your time. Why is UCHEMS important? Why is it important to have this network of, of European societies? Well, I think a lot of individual societies do a lot of excellent work and they, they work together. But in order to have the critical mass to really make an influence in Europe, you have to have everybody working together. You can't just have lots of different people coming in with different messages. We can provide a single unified voice for chemistry and explain why it's so important to the community. And I think that's one of the things that, that you can't do as an individual. It brings together countries which are very small and very large. Very small countries could have very little influence, but some of them sit on our executive board and they can have influence through that. So I think it's really the two things. It's the, the individual voice and then the diversity of countries making the whole much bigger than the sum of the parts. So what are some of the moments and achievements from your time in office that you're most proud of? Well, I, I think the, we've done a lot of work in trying to build the lobbying potential of UCHEMS in the European Parliament and the European Commission. And I think we've been making a lot of success there. We've um, managed to get invited on many, many missions to do with the circular economy, which is about how we make sure that we don't lose resources. And we've had, uh, we have an expert on the a high level group on open science from UCHEMS and gradually we're building up so they're coming to us to ask us what to do rather than us having to go to them saying this is what you have to put into your chemistry stuff. And I think that, I'm very proud of that. We've done a lot of work on chemical weapons which is a, an outrageous thing and we're trying to make sure that it's banned in every country and at the moment there are only four countries where chemical weapons are not banned uh, by the and, and have agreed to join the Convention on Banning Chemical Weapons. And one of those is Israel, which has signed the, the, con the um, Convention but hasn't ratified it. And I'm trying to work very hard with the president of the Israeli Chemical Society, Ehud Kanan, who's a very, very brave man, to try to make sure that Israel does ratify that. And then I think more recently there are things going on now which I'm, I'm very, very happy about. We've developed a course on ethics. Now, nobody teaches ethics to chemists, or very few people teach ethics to chemists. And yet, ethics is an enormously important area for chemists. So we've got a course which is just about finished. It's going to be an online course, interactive. Uh, it's a very, very comprehensive course. I'll be talking about that at lunchtime when you've got it written down there. Um, and we, we really think this is going to make a difference to, to chemists. And the other thing is related to the International Year of the Periodic Table, which is going to happen next year. 2019, it's the 150th anniversary of the development of the periodic table, or the first writing down of the periodic table by Dmitry Mendeleev. I mean, there's this controversy about who was first, but we generally accept him as the person who did the periodic table. And so we've developed a new periodic table, which I have on my phone here, but you may not be able to see it, so I may have to show you a different version, but this is it here. And it's a very unusual periodic table. And what it does is it shows First of all, the area shows how much of the elements are available and the colours show how uh, they're running out. And so red ones may, win, may not have them in 100 years. And it also has on here, which you can't see, but I'll show you in a minute, a mobile phone symbol. And this is, shows the elements that are in the mobile phone. So you've got in your pocket all of these elements which are running out. Some of them are what are called conflict minerals and they come from areas where there are countries where there's wars being fought over them. So rather than show you that very small version, I thought I would just show you a different version. And here okay. you'll have to hold my hold that. Right. And I'm just going to show you, um, if you'll forgive me stripping in public, um, the, the, it's a bit easier to see here, I hope. So, uh, well, this is a first of this year's <laughs> Congress, I promise you. So um, we have here the, that same periodic table. I think you'll see it better now on your cameras, I hope so. And you can see the colours which represent the uh, different lengths of time. So green means there's plenty available. Yellow, orange means uh, yellow means there's some likelihood of depletion. And gradually, as you go to red, very likely to be depletion. And you can see the mobile phone symbol. And these grey ones are the, one, are the are the ones which are conflict minerals. So I'm very proud of this. I've been involved in developing this. And what we want to do with this is we want to put it into schools. We want to put it into schools so that. Um, they will see this. It's, it's not a normal periodic table, so it will hang beside a normal periodic table. And we want children to come in and say, what's that? And as soon as someone says, what's that? You've got them. You've captured their interest. They'll find out more. There's more on here, and then there'll be uh, 
places they can go to get more information. And indeed, attached to this, we're also developing a video game for children on the periodic table. And we want to take that forward, uh, and so there'll be a link on here which links them to the periodic table. David, it's been entertaining, certainly, and very illuminating and interesting as well. Okay, Thank you for your so time. Much.